All right, guys, so in this week's video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the techniques and tactics that we used to win a tournament two weeks ago with 58 pounds of smallies for 10 fish and to take a top 10 in the Sturgeon Bay Open with around 50 and a half pounds. So I wanna go over some of the baits, some of the tips, some of the tricks and new things that I learn every single year. And I don't fish a lot of tournaments. I'm not an active tournament pro, mainly a fishing guide. That's how I pay my bills, do some YouTube stuff. But what I really like doing is I like learning and I like passing that sort of no BS information on. Now there are a few tricks and stuff. I did see some baits I did see that I'm not really gonna talk about because I, you know, when guys wanna talk about things, they'll talk about them. They figured certain things out. But one of the new things I figured out this year that I really wanna show you and I'm excited to show you about is fishing tiny tubes like a swim bait, right? I'm gonna show you that in a sec. The first thing is I wanna show you as well been using the new Sunline eight pound test and 10 pound test. And it works fantastic. You can cast so much farther with the Sunline. Now I only use a couple spools for tournament fishing because it's really expensive. Okay. And then I'm also using shooter eight and 10 and nine for my leaders. Sometimes even 12. Okay. 10, eight, nine, 10 shooter line. And my favorite reel that I use on all my rods is the PC Fun Carbon X 2000. The reason I like this reel so much, guys, is it casts very, very far. It has 10 ball bearings. For those of you guys that are like me and you buy a lot of your own stuff and you don't get discounts, you're gonna like the price of these. You can pick these up for around 60 bucks or so, maybe even less, depending on what price you get them at, and use my code EH15 in the description below and you can save yourself 15%. And you will like these reels. They are a versatile reel and they work fantastic. But now, first things first, let's go over all the different rods and baits and tackle that I wanna talk about. Now here's the one tricky rig that has taken me, oh, a while and I'm still learning it and all the uh, adaptations to hair, okay? When I talk about hair, I'm talking about a small jig with whether it's marabou, um, could be deer hair like this. There's different types of hair. So deer hair is hollow, so it falls slower. Then you have marabou as well, different types of hair. And some of the variations and some of the trickery, some of the things I've learned is adding like a small piece of gulp on the back. So it gives it more buoyancy and density, a small twister tra a tail. Some of the tiny, tiny finesse finesse things that I'm learning that uh, that you really have to match a light long rod and Thorn Brothers makes one of the best hair jig rods also Daiwa does make a solid hair jig rod um, and you have to balance that right so you have to have a light rod that you can whip and when I mean whip when you're throwing hair if you ever watch anyone that knows how to throw hair when they whip it it's whoosh, you hear it whip and it's just basically firing it out there and just holding the rod tip up and just reeling, reeling. Once in a while you can give it a little pop, but just straight reeling. Now there are guys that are doing some magical things with tiny, tiny baits too, guys. When I mean finesse baits, it's not just hair. And I'm gonna show you, I'm right here by a pond. At the end of the video, I wanna show you a way how I fish a jerk bait. I wanna show you how I slow down, maybe fish a tube. Um, but I want to just go over some of the baits that we were using to win in this last tournament. One was definitely hair. We caught some big fish on hair. Now, where does hair shine? And that's the thing I want to talk to you guys about. It's knowing when and where. It seems like hair always will catch smallmouth bass, but it really seems to work when there's areas, if there's slime or a bottom that your bait will get gunked up, you can throw that leech like, it's basically like a leech swimming through the water and it is just deadly. Walleyes, everything eats hair. So if you haven't fished hair, fish it. Now the biggest smallmouth bass I ever lost in my PB last year was on a jerk bait. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how I surge and pause work this jerk bait. Not so much, you know, like you see a lot of guys twitch, 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 you know. I'm giving it more of a surge, pause, and then just a pop, pop. 
surge, pop, pop. Long pauses sometimes. So that was one of the key factors for Brett and I in catching a lot of big fish. As far as jerk baits, there are so many different jerk baits you can use, but the two or three that really seem to shine for me in my box are the Vision 110s, the Plus Ones, the Lucky Crafts, um, those sort of baits, the Old Rogues, um, and some of the McSticks and things like that. Those are all great jerk baits. And when there's waves, they work. And actually, guys, one of the best times as well to throw them is throw them up shallow in calm conditions. I've caught some really, really big fish on them as well. And we're gonna just keep moving through some of my favorite baits. Like if I had to pick one bait, and you told me I had one bait, what's my favorite bait to throw to catch smallmouth bass? And that's just a paddle tail and a football head jig. Like, I love that. Now, I didn't use this a lot in the tournament. This, when there's big waves and there's big rollers and I'm fishing new areas, man, I use this a ton. I use a football head jig, 3 8 ounce most of the time, sometimes a half ounce if I'm a little deeper, but a 3 8 ounce on 14 or 16 pound straight fluorocarbon leader. And that is a great search bait for me and it's probably my favorite bait to use all time okay talking about swim baits so i want to talk about swim baits because you have to know when to throw certain swim baits okay so when it's you know when it's really rough and wavy i learned from some customers of mine about five years ago that boy you can throw a big five inch you can throw you know, a mag draft and catch seven pound smallies up here in Door County. You can throw big glide baits and, and pull up fish and see fish. So the unique thing about this fishery is they'll eat a big bait and they will also eat the tiniest of tiny baits. You know, the two inch cut down little easy shiner on a tiny, tiny jig head. They'll eat a one, do I have them here? The one inch um, a little one inch Mr. Twister, guys, like a panfish bait. You know, a little brown one inch Mr. Twister. You know, micro hair jigs. And last but not least, one thing a lot of guys are not doing are using micro tubes, the smaller tubes, okay? So the get bit tube works, man, I, I use all different types of tubes. And it seems like when you get in a high pressure situation, sometimes you have to go smaller so the strike king um these smaller strike king tubes the what are they the bitsy tube works great also have some custom tiny tubes tiny tubes tiny jig heads how light do we go 16th ounce on this so you whip it out and the way you fish this tube and again this is something i've learned from like the guys at howie's and watching other guys is you really fish it a lot of times like a paddle tail. You bomb it out or a hair jig. You just straight reel it. Once in a while, give it a little twitch. And they come up and crack it. So if you haven't fished a light tube, it works great. And, and I'm telling you, I had caught six and seven pounders on football head, you know, on a, on a round tube. We put a, um, a 3 8 ounce, a bigger tube will work too. The biggest key I see to fish in bottom baits. And I wanna take a minute and talk about bottom baits. Bottom baits is a tube, dark sleeper, and a Ned rig. Those are probably the three I use as a bottom bait. And what I mean is, bomb it out, hits the bottom, and I drag it across the bottom. There's something to be said about some of the biggest smallmouth bass I have caught in my life, and we have caught in the tournaments, have come on bottom baits so you'll catch all sorts of fish but if you know something about fishing a tube you know the thing i noticed when we were fishing these bottom baits when it was fairly calm and sunny we would have to bomb them out there and basically let me grab a tube rod here i got all this stuff all in front of me we would bomb them out there okay let it go down to the bottom eighth ounce sixteenth ounce and just pull slow and hold and hold and a little pop reel down 
full little pop pop. And basically it's a goby moving. And then if you see gobies underneath the water, they often will make a quick little surge to get underneath something. So that little tiny pop pop, pop pop, or just a single little pop, whatever. Just to get that, a lot of times it creates an instant reaction strike. So when you're fishing a bottom bait, you can drag a tube, you can drag a dark sleeper, um, you can drag uh, a Ned rig. We've caught giants on Ned rigs. All those baits have worked fantastic for me. I'm gonna take a second now and I wanna show you what I'm talking about by casting these baits. All right guys, just wanna take a second and show you how I'm working a couple of these baits, right? So just gonna pitch out this jerk bait and if I bombed it out, I would basically just surge it, hold it, twitch, twitch, and reel down, keeping tight line, watching the tip and watching for the pop. Surge it, pop, pop, surge it. And yeah, you can do the normal pop, pop, but try surging it and hold. Pop, pop, reel down, surge it and hold, especially in the cold, free spawn conditions that technique surging the stick bait seems to work fantastic you know just pulling a minnow forward pop pop try it i'm going to show you how i work this hair jig now all right we got the hair jig get it a little wet dip dip it in the water and when you cast this thing you want to hear this noise you want to hear that whip let it go out and then you just Oh, I'm, oh, I just missed one right away. <laughs> just let it sink. Everything eats hair. Nice and slow. Just reel it steady and slow. Looks like a leech. Now, there's a lot of guys that are using hair with little tungsten jig heads, adding a little tiny paddle tail, using rabbit hair versus different types of hair. So I'm telling you, the Canadians, they got their secrets. They got it figured out. But if you haven't thrown hair yet, if you haven't thrown it yet, tried it, trust me, it works. And the guys up at Howie's and Thorn Brothers, they sell some really good custom hair jigs. All right, guys, last but not least, I want to take uh, another minute or two and talk about some of the behavior of the smallmouth bass that I happen to see. Now, what I notice on cold fronts when these fish would push back and slide out, if it was sunny, I could see these fish at times laying and really not basically like sunning themselves they just lay they lay out there and th and they don't want to come up three feet all the time to eat a bait it just seems like when they're snapping out of this funk out of their winter hibernation and they slide up there are times when i've seen the fish struggling to swim up uh in the water you know they're just they're coming out of that winter you know uh, hiber hibernation and the behavior i just saw by these fish was very very interesting it just seemed like if you could trigger them with a goby style bait or a bait on the bottom boy they'd almost eat it all the time but a lot of times they didn't want to come up for a hair jig or they didn't want to come up for a jerk bait so the fish behavior was one thing that was really really important with the tiny tiny baits and the one thing if you come up to this area you'll notice that a lot of the species of smallmouth or, or size of the smallmouth often will school by certain sizes so if you're finding those big pre-spawn fish that are four to seven pounds those are the right fish even if you're not finding a lot of them those are the right fish that will win you big tournaments have you catch the biggest fish of your life and many of you guys don't fish a ton of tournaments and hopefully this information just helps you go out and catch more fish you know if you see slimy weedy conditions that means you need to pull a bait either a weedless bait or like a hair jig or a swim bait above it when you've got the right when you're when you're able to decipher the right type of bottom you know, an old smallmouth bass fisherman up there, Gene, um, he taught me just how to read the right sort of rock, open sort of rock bottom content. You know, you don't always want all shale. Sometimes sand is really good, especially depressions in sand. But if you can find the right scattered boulder and gravel and sand patches, boy, it just seems like anywhere I go on the Great Lakes, that is money 
for smallmouth bass. So once you can kind of see that, like when you know what cabbage looks like, or you know what milfoil looks like, or rock pile, and now you know what scattered rock and sand with big boulders, a lot of times the big boulder spot is where the big ones live. So you mark that biggest boulder, because that's where Big Daddy and Big Mama's hanging out. I mean, heck, they got the biggest damn house in the neighborhood. You know they got what's coming on until we put a jig right upside there and screw it. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's video. Super, super stoked that we took the dub. I mean, very, very blessed and happy. Got to give credit to all the guys that have helped me along the way and have taught me and made me a better fisherman. That's why I won because of them. So... Hopefully you learned something in this week's video on catching pre-spawn smallmouth bass. You take these tips with you if you go to Sturgeon Bay or anywhere else, and hopefully they help you out. I'm going to go make some dinner. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. That's it. See you guys.